Oz is hooked to that nearest tree over there, eh? Yeah, away you go. <laughs> Jason and Simon are in the Cape York region of northern Queensland. They're starting at Laura, here just off the development road, and are headed for the seldom visited river systems of the Western Cape, on the hunt for Barramundi. It's a long trip, so the first order of business is filling up. He's going, fellas. Some diesel, eh? Yeah, it's a bit of diesel. Yep. Well, that's our last fuel from we're at Musgrave here, and that's our last fuel before we start heading down to the west coast. Now probably got to put in an eight, at least a thousand kilometres so I haven't got room to ha carry any jerry cans and I can fill the long range tank up and that should keep me going for at least a thousand k's. So we've got everything I think, we've got water, we've got heaps of fuel, filled all those big tanks up. And um, things like going, I can haul more fuel than you. Now you got to love those long-range tanks, mate. It's the only way to go up here. Pretty good, eh? The worst part's when you fill up, you got to pay for it. We're heading bush now, moving further away from the main track. As we hit the floodplains, the challenge will be these channel crossings. Hey, uh, looks like a bit greasy here, mate. A bit of tidal action by the looks, eh? My truck makes it through without much trouble. Oh, it looks a bit deeper than I thought. Well, it does look a bit soggy. It's very soggy. You're going to have to hit it pretty hard, I think. Well, there he goes. You might be winching me out, yeah? I've done your treat. I haven't put the hubs in. <laughs> you stupid bastard. What a rookie mistake. But now, even with his hubs locked, old mate is stuck in the mud. No! Oh, it'll come out pretty easy. I was just hooked to that nearest tree over there, eh? Yeah, away you go. <laughs> oh. Poor Simon, that's got to burn. But we're mates, and in situations like this, the important thing to remember is solidarity, friendship, working together towards that common goal, and not bringing up other people's mistakes. Right, mate. That's a rookie mistake, that one! <laughs> hey, you've done it before! You used to have hubs, remember? That was the first one to do it. Maybe the last. Now, see if we can get the can. I'm not sure what's up ahead of us yet. Well, the track's a little bit greasy, and hopefully we don't have to do any more winching. You know, it's a bit of a rookie mistake, old Simon, but anyway, that's how it goes. But we're heading towards the Coleman River and we're trying to set up camp before we lose that sun. And the Coleman and the Mitchell, we're going to try and fish both of them. But uh, it's a pretty uh, secluded little spot here. You've got to uh, pre-book it. And they only let a certain number of people in. So, sounds like it could be, could be on for young and old with a bit of fishing and some great scenery. This morning on Cape York Peninsula, we're up early to launch the boats for a run up the Coleman River. We're hoping to reel in some barramundi today, so we head towards the river mouth where the brackish water flows into the Arafura Sea. The wildlife around here is amazing. Serious bird life over here, mate. Around that river mouth, I think. They're all pelicans. 
Huh? You do? There's old pelicans. Yeah. Pelicans cover the banks along the river. They are a big bird. It's quite a sight to see them in the air. On the beach, we find water teeming with Popeye mullet. And that means bait. Hey, they are quick. If you can catch them. Yes. <laughs> Got you, you cheeky little monkeys. Further on shore, we move higher up the food chain. Simon, Simon, oi, there's a big goanna up there, mate. Yeah. Up here, up here, you go around that way. Go, go. You got him? Oh, oh, yes, got him. Oh, well, you got him? <laughs> Damn, you haven't hesitated. Bad move. Here, I'll grab the tail. Gotcha. Well done. That's a big goanna, mate, eh? Oh, he's a cracker. That's a solid goanna. Oh, I can't believe he stopped and turned and looked at me. Oh, early morning, see? He's a little bit, he's a little bit cold. What do you oh. think about all that, mate? Oh, that's gold. That's a good, good specimen, this guy. Yeah, strong. Look at that claws on Mate, power to weight, these goannas are some of the most powerful monitors in the, in the reptilian family, eh? I reckon they got more power than a croc yeah. for their size, eh? Mm. Very powerful tail. You see the size of that tail there? Mate, he has the ability to just whip you. Absolutely whip you. And that's what he uses. That's his little, that's his little mechanism for defense. He'll actually go and st probably, if he's gonna stop and, and approach her or, Stand his ground, he'll use that tail and he'll whip that thing around. He's looking at me like he's not happy. <laughs> <laughs> his other defense mechanism is those teeth, mate, and that bite. He's got a serious set of choppers in there. They got real bad germs too, apparently. Yeah, so they, they harbor a lot of bacteria in their mouth because they eat a lot of rotting flesh. They're a scavenger, so they spend a lot of their time, and he'd be cruising up and down these sand up and down these little sandbanks, and he'd be looking for dead, dead fish that's been washed up on the shore. Turtle dead eggs. Birds, oh, yeah. They dig them up, eh? Oh, they love the turtle eggs, mate. He's also got some powerful claws. That, those claws there is what makes him an absolutely awesome tree climber. And you only got to look at the hooks on there. They almost look like talons from, a, from an eagle's claw. What do you reckon, mate? Should we let him go? Yeah, let him go. We've hassled him long enough. That's the one. Let him go without getting bitten. All right, well, we're going to have to... He didn't bite me getting him. He's, he's not sure if you let me go. <laughs> See you, buddy. <laughs> he's out of here. He's got that... He puffs himself up. He puts the air into a little chamber underneath his throat and then he forces it out through his nose. And it's like a, a real throaty growl. And that's what he says. He's talking to me, he's saying, you stay away from me, buddy. Let's go catch some fish. All right. You're right, mate. We head off to chase the barra and leave old mate here to strut his stuff on the sand. the Gulf Coast of Cape York. Fishing for bower at the mouths of the Mitchell and Coleman Rivers. And it doesn't take long. We are on. Indeed. Oh, he's only just lip, man. How am I going to get him? Hold on, just hold on, see? In easy. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I'm going for it. You're in. <laughs> I'm going for it. Well done. Woo! 
Oh, how yeah, good's that? He nailed that, like, right at the side of the boat. And followed her in, eh? Yep. Right at the boat. Look at that hook's just got him in the lip. <laughs> a saltwater barrel? What do you reckon? It's <laughs> dinner, all right. Yeah, you good solid fish, that, that eh? That's a nice fish, isn't it? That's something chewed the back of him there. Happy with that. And it's not long before I'm on as well. There's fish lurking in here. Yes! <laughs> there he is. Oh, yes. Another fish. He's not as big as yours. It's a nice fish. He's a bear. It's all that counts. Not bad. He goes all right, eh? Bad at all. Oh, it's a nice barra. In over the boat. It's good to catch barra, that. That easy when you come places like this. <laughs> Definitely makes the uh, getting bogged yesterday a little bit more pleasant, eh? That was only minor bog. That was not bad. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bit small, this one. I'm going to throw him back. Have to be uh, 55 centimetres here in Queensland. Oh, he just dug his hooks into my arm. Ouch. Bob, go in? No. No. Now Simon's complaining that the fish are bothering him. Typical. Coffee or something in one hand, catch a fish. Oh. Putting on a turn back there. What the hell's got me? What have we got? The anticipation. It's the leader. It's colour. It's a barra. <laughs> You're caught with a barra. It's not a bad one either. I've got to be happy with that. <laughs> just have coffee and leave your rod lay there. They just jump on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're asleep. I'm too loser. Oh, I know. It's a nice fish. Yeah, see if you can snag him. Oh, bring him here. I don't want to pull him in. Be green, eh? Oh. This is where most fish are lost, is it? The boat. That's exactly it. <laughs> Land and nets, they work, but they're just a tangle up with lures, aren't they? Oh, well done. Ah. Well done. There you go, mate. Look at that. Another nice saltwater barrel. Well, we wanted to have the Coleman and go, mate. So far, I'm impressed. Yeah, I'm, especially I'm... when you can catch fish while you're asleep. <laughs> God, are you happy with that? You didn't spill my coffee, did you, whilst I was catching that fish? Yeah, no, it's all right. I'll hold all the stuff for you. Thanks, mate. Can you drive the boat, too? Yeah. Good job. Here's your coffee, mate. You want that yet? No, can you just hold it till I get my barrel? OK. Thanks, mate. You've got to be happy with that. Well... The Coleman River was great, but it's time to move on. We'll pack up camp and push north to the Holroyd River tonight and try our luck there tomorrow morning. Hey guys, today's video is brought to you by the new product from Camp Boss 4x4. Now it's called the Nudie Boss Shower Tent and it's designed to be convenient and easy to pack up and set up and have a private area where you can get dressed, changed, have a shower, go to the toilet, whatever you want to do. It's awesome, it's easy, check this out. How cool is that? Simple as that, guys. So inside, if you have a quick look, you'll notice there is, there's a couple of uh, pouches here to store some stuff, your shower gel or whatever. Up here, have a look at this, so that's where the shower head will come through. Comes with a light. Have a look here, so the switching of the light, we've got white and orange. And this is pretty cool as well. I can put the roof in. A couple of Velcro clips, 
and I've got a private place where I can either go to the toilet, I can do a, have a shower, all those sorts of things. There she is, guys, the nudie boss. Now, if you get a chance, go on to Camp Boss 4x4 Shop Online or check out your local Camp Boss 4x4 dealer. Anyway, back to the adventure. Jace and Simon are exploring Cape York and fishing the rivers that feed the Gulf of Carpentaria. After success at the Mitchell and Coleman, they're heading north towards the Holroyd River and have set up camp here. With daylight, they're able to assess their situation and keep moving. Well, last night, we come across this creek crossing and we decided not to tackle it at night, just in case something happened. So we set up camp here and now we're going to see how it is, see how it goes. So we'll go and see what it's like. But I'll make sure I get Simon to lock his hubs in this time. Simon, you on channel? Yeah, you come here, Joe's. Uh, yeah, mate. Uh, you want to make sure you lock your hubs in, eh? Helps, doesn't it? Yeah, helps a little bit. You know, they're already in there. I'll just put diff locks in because I always like to err on the side of caution because for me, I don't like to spend too much time digging myself out of bog holes. Got your hubs in, mate. Uh, yeah, mate, yeah. I actually don't have hubs. Not like your truck. You got that truck. You're the fancy truck. Pop that. Oh, you gotta love that horsepower. Okay, I'm going in. I do love a good mud hole first thing in the morning. Drala. Looks like it's winch time again. That trailer doesn't help. That thing weighs about 2, 2.1, 2.2. And it's one thing to drive around this bush with with just a four wheel drive and some gear. It's another thing to be towing trailers and stuff like that. That just, that just puts, puts a real deadener on it. Makes you, slows you right up, that's for sure. All right, away you go. You're out of here in a jiffy. Yeah, that's the way it goes out here. We're used to it, quick winch. It's only a matter of time before we're on our way again. <laughs> Like a quick recovery first thing in the morning, mate. Nothing like a good recovery in the morning, eh, to wake you up. That's the one. Oh, good. There we go. I don't know what this track's going to produce, but we haven't gone that far along, and that's our first recovery. 70 k's, I think we've got. Oh. This one might require a bit of walking, I think. Simon, just hold up, mate. Uh, Bit of a hole up here. What do you reckon? Ah, it's not too bad. Might have a little trouble getting on the other side, but... Okay, give it a go. You okay, right, mate? Go hard. <laughs> you gotta love that, haven't you? You made it, just. You see that wheel spinning, mate? That wasn't just, that was just like pure horsepower, mate. That was like, that was like a ballet, mate. 
Break your chainsaw out, mate. I ain't dragging that big ass trailer in there. I know what will happen when I go into it. Oh, come on! <laughs> I'm going bush. Uh... So off I go, walking ahead of Simon, clearing a path for his truck and that big trailer he's dragging. Going bush. If you're towing a load through a bush track like this, a decent chainsaw is a tool you can't afford to do without. Look at that. I didn't even get my tyres wet. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Good job. <laughs> I'll just go and put my skirt on now, eh? All right. We're over halfway now and not far from the coast, but there is still a couple of obstacles in our way. Get a load of what the wet's done to this track, mate. There's a bit of a hole up here, but I think I can straddle it. Away we go. Sometimes it's probably easier just to drive, drive it rather than spend half an hour packing through the bush. Now I've got diff locks and low range, so it should be just a matter of driving through it. Quite easily. They're easy, mate. It looks tricky, but it, you know, it's nice and steady. Trailer wheels didn't want to go out of there. <laughs> it looked tricky, didn't it? The track throws a couple of more deep ruts at us, but nothing we can't handle. Soon enough, we're back on schedule, heading for our next campsite. drive through this country, you'll notice these things. Now, sure they're the average looking termite mound, but these ones are a little bit special. They're called a magnetic termite mound. And the termites inside can actually build their nest using the magnetic fields of the earth. So they'll actually build their nest to capture the sun's rays. So the sun, obviously, east, west, and the mound, its thinnest point will run north, south. So you can imagine if you are lost in the bush, you're running through this country, you're lost, you've got no compass, you could actually use this termite mound to give you direction. I've just got a compass here, and I'm just going to do a bit of a check. So that's magnetic north there, and that's the thinnest part of the mound. So it's narrow, and then the widest part obviously faces east and west, which is the sun. Now, you can imagine it would be a really good practical tool because I know that that's north, that means over there's the ocean, and over there's inland. And that way, down south. As we get closer to the water, the landscape opens up and the ground gets more spongy. Let's take a look at what's happened here. Oh. Yeah, that'll do it every time, mate. Oh well, let's get you out, eh? Hello. Hopefully that's the last stop we make before we hit the water. I'm looking forward to catching some barra. Okay, guys, this video is brought to you today by the Boss Shadow 270 XL from Camboss 4x4. Today, I want to show you the new awning from Camboss 4x4. Now, this is a 270, so it wraps around 270 degrees, and it's a freestanding full A-frame awning. What I'll do is I'll set the thing up and I'll show you how easy it is to set up by yourself. We'll do the back section first. 
Now I've already got the little hooky things here. Now these have a little ratchet on the end of them. So I just clip that onto the end here, like that. And pretty much you just pull that ratchet, nice and tight. You set the front bit up, same setup, just hook that on the end there, pull your ratchet, like that, pull it nice and tight, like that, okay. It's got three LED lights, one in each of the arms. It's got a zipper in the back here, so that zipper is to allow you access to a rooftop tent. And that's pretty much it. Anyway, that's enough from me. Keep checking out the video. We wake to a stunning morning on the Gulf Coast of Cape York. We camp right next to Snake Creek and I can't resist an early morning cast. Simon, he's still asleep, but I can't wait around for him. I'm gonna have a flick and sure enough, first cast. Oh, yes! Barra! <laughs> yes! Oh, he's not too bad either. Not too shabby, that one. Oh, nice Barra. The tide's just starting to come in on this creek. And for some reason, it's taken ages. It's almost like there's one tide a day here. And I knew they had to be barren in this creek. But once that tide's starting to turn now and it's starting to stir them up, there's a couple sitting over there as well. Just visually, I could see them. I'm gonna have another crack and get this guy off and let him go. That's not a, a bad early morning barra. He's probably just legal at about 58 centimetres. But let you go, buddy. Some bigger ones in here, I'm sure. And straight away, I'm back on. Oh, yes! All this commotion has woken up old mate. You meant to wake me up when you go fishing. No, you're asleep. Good stuff. Look at that. Could be happy with that. <laughs> Not a bad fish. That's a great fish. <laughs> Probably just legal, but. Yep. <laughs> well done. What an awesome way to start the day. But as soon as the sun hits the water, the creek changes into a more sedate place. The fish disappear, and it's our cue to hightail it out as well. I think that's about it. Caught a couple of fish this morning. Wasn't too bad. It's a nice little spot here. But I think it might be time to move on. We've got to keep heading. I'll go for a fish on another river, see what we can find, and hopefully not get stuck in the process. You've got to love this sort of country. It has so many possibilities, so many specky little places. It's worth just spending time here. Not necessarily catching any fish, but even just spending time here. Packing up our campsite, we get back on track and we head inland to the fresh water reaches of the Holroyd River, where we're hoping to catch some of those freshwater barra. We've just got our first glimpse of the Holroyd River, and it looks like we've come into the, the brackish or partly fresh side of the river. Awesome. It's always exciting coming to new places. <laughs> Go and have a look. Looks like a good spot, mate. Bit of a rock bar, eh? Gonna be something lurking around here. Only one way to find out.
yes! Smashed it. Little rat barra. There we go. There he is. This little rock bar here, I'd say, you got fresh water on one side, and this will be sort of semi brackish water on the other side. That's not a bad little fish, that one. Obviously, nowhere near legal size, but he is a barra, and to start. There you go. You go and hang out down at his snag there. I'll see if I can catch a bigger one. Oh! <laughs> he just nailed that one right there. He's hungry, that guy. That was a bit bigger too. Oh, that's exciting steering. There he goes, he got it. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, the only little fish, but they're such good fun. My heart's just racing. You know, I'm catching little, little rat barrows. <laughs> it's exciting stuff. That's the thing with fishing. It does that to you. Gets the old heart pumping. I'm catching little fish, but it's still fun. I was walking just over there before in the shallows, and I pretty much, I didn't see it till I was about a metre away from it. But it was a three metre, or well, probably two and a half metre freshwater croc. And he just leisurely glided off. He was sitting under the water, glided off into the deeper section off the drop off. Just gotta have your eyes open all the time around here. Oh, yes! Oh, this one's got a bit more stick. Oh, this one's a bit bigger. Wouldn't say he was a prize winner, but bigger nonetheless. Here we go. There we go, it's a bit bigger. Nice fish, that one. Oh, that's an easy release, that one. That's not a bad size, that one. Like he's probably not quite legal. But I'll tell you, like I said before, you get the heart racing and the blood pumping. Just catching barra. This is what they do. I'll just drop him down now. There he goes. It's bound to be some bigger fish there. It's this little lure here that is catching them. And this one is actually a what they call a suspend lure. So it doesn't necessarily float. It just sort of, when you stop pulling on the front of it like that, it'll actually stop and just sit there in suspension. So I think that's what's doing the trick. It sits there in suspension. The barra are quite lazy this time of the year because the water's cold even though we don't think it's cold, they do. It just sits there, and the barra, he's thinking, oh, look, fair enough, it's in front of my nose. Bang, he come out and hit it. A bit later, I spot old mate that gave me a fright before. He's just a small freshwater croc, not a man eater. So I decided to take a closer look. Easy does it. There he goes. He's right there. He's looking at me at the moment. He'll smash at the bits. There he goes. He's popped up. Off you go, mate. There's enough room in here for both of us. Introducing the home of Australian adventure. Unleashed TV, a growing library of content featuring the best of four-wheel driving, fishing, touring, rig builds, bush cooking, and whatever you call this. Hope the airbags take up. Stream entire seasons of the hit TV show All for Adventure. Get me out of here, boys. Water's coming in. Unleashed. Oh, that's tight. And more original series from Jace and the team. In this mini-series, we're going to be exploring some of the most remote coastlines. Plus, get fresh new content exclusive to Unleashed TV subscribers. Snap is mate. This is all going on down here, You it? can stream it all for just $9.99 per month. Yeah! That's why Unleashed TV oh, yeah. is the home 
of Australian Adventure.